All right, so Chad, you've done a great job with uh, st- starting the intros with these uh, podcasts. So I want to take that off your plate for a second and or kick you off your soapbox and open up uh, with an intro. So the two most common conditions that we see incredible results that most people are suffering from nowadays is sleep and anxiety, right? So if you don't sleep, life sucks, right? If sleep goes down, anxiety spikes, sleep goes up, anxiety starts to correct. So what do you think about that? They're interrelated. They're yeah. interrelated. You know, what I do know about that, and obviously I'm not a doctor, but mm-hmm. what I do know about that is when uh, when you're not sleeping, it can increase your cortisol levels, which is right. your, your stress hormone, right? Mm-hmm. And then that increases your anxiety. Mm-hmm. And the one, and when you're not sleeping and you're anxious, your anxiety is going to prevent you from sleep and vice versa. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of becomes a downward spiral. And unfortunately, uh, most people try to treat anxiety when they don't really focus on the sleep part of it, right? So once you start treating anxiety, it's a benzodiazepine or Xan- like Xanax, and uh, those are, are uh, peaks and valleys, right? So uh, and you constantly have to keep uptaking more uh, as you get, build a tolerance to it, similar to cannabis. But when you build the tolerance with cannabis, then you just kind of switch the route or modality. Uh, Xanax is still a pill, and the pill just gets bigger, and the side effects get worse. Mm-hmm. I mean, especially with those benzos. I mean, mm. people that have been on benzos for a long time really just struggle with a short-term memory and a number of other things, and it's, it's sad to watch. It is. We have so many beautiful, vibrant, uh, even women, you know, beautiful, vibrant people, but but, but the women, uh, so many women are taking benzos, and the, the, they have this beautiful face, and the lights are on, but they're just gray inside, and we have to repeat things over and over and over again uh, because it's just not retaining any information, and that's going to be a terrible way to live. I can't imagine... Uh, what life is like being on a benzo, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah, it's, it's got to be horrible. And, but, you know, on the flip side of that, though, what, what is, what's really inspiring to see is those seven-month follow-ups. Yes. It's yeah. Seeing those people come in that, that we did have that kind of a conversation yeah. with, mm-hmm. and then it's much, they're calmer. Yep. They can retain things. The look on their face. The look yeah. on their face. Yeah. I mean, literally, we've seen people come in brighter. Yep. Literally brighter on the inside and out. It's amazing. The state requires a seven-month follow-up, right? So uh, to become certified for medical marijuana, you have to have a physical encounter with the doctor and the patient in the same room. That's clear in the law. Uh, but the seven-month uh, follow-ups, we require the patients to come in at least one more time so we can have that rewarding and fulfillment uh, and also document the incredible progress. And then uh, we offer the the, the uh, virtual telemedicine visits, which have been going you know, phenomenal. We've been able to retain uh, about 80% of our patients, which is amazing. And it's interesting how patients go and then they come back, you know, so, but now sleep, uh, you know, there is a spe- specific strain that is known for sleep. We want to talk about that? Yes, indica. So indica. Indica tends to be the best mm-hmm. for when people need sleep because it's more body dominant, can help kind of make you a little bit groggy, mm-hmm. get, your, get, your, get yourself warm and fuzzy for bed. So indica, also known as indica couch, that's a good way to remember, right? Uh, there are some people, ironically though, that are the opposite. Uh, I do, I have talked to some patients that will take a sativa, which is supposed to be stimulating, appetite suppressing, and energizing. Uh, they'll take a sativa to go down and indica uh, to get through the day. Most of those people are usually the ADD, ADHD uh, patients, but uh, you know it's interesting. But that's why cannabis is a recommendation and not necessarily a prescription because everybody's different. Exactly, and some other things that you know if you really want to get into the day. Right, yeah, on how to get some really good sleep or just kind of calming effects, you can get into terpenes. Yes. And there's three <clears throat> terpenes that I know that are really good for that. Uh, linalool can mm. be really good. Mm. Uh, terpaline, neurolidol, all three are really good for kind of that calming and sedating, get you ready for bed. And you can find out what is what terpenes are in your products. Mm. You can ask for a certificate of analysis from any dispensary. Yeah, the COAs, yeah. Each dispensary that sells a product has to have a certificate of analysis attached to it. So, And then you can also incorporate terpenes on top of that product too. So uh, we'll uh, show the terpene chart in this video so that people can see. But our patients understand the difference in terpenes because we do talk about that often uh, when we do our education. So It's a, it's an important part of it because you know, mm. that does add additional effects to it in you know, this is kind of how that, that it works with cannabis. When you add in the right terpenes, you get the right combination of THC. If you can throw in some CBD in there, hey. they, they, you can create the entourage effect. That's right. The entourage effect. Uh, the more cannabinoids, the better. I always describe it as one cannabinoid. It's like one key on a piano. You listen to that constant and over and over again. That's going to get annoying. Uh, and the best way to describe that would be CBD isolate, which is what most of the gas stations and health food stores are selling. It's absolute garbage. I don't recommend taking isolate. There's no medicinal benefit to it whatsoever, unless you're going to uptake a massive amount of it, and then it becomes toxic to the liver. That's why they had problems with Epidolex, which was the first medic- uh, FDA-approved uh, cannabis product for epilepsy. 
uh, but it had its 5,000 milligrams of uh, CBD and it, it was it became toxic to the liver started to kill the rats they were testing it on but uh, you know Going back to the indica at night uh, before you go to bed, there's three different routes or really to, to, to use for, I mean, to keep it simple, right? You have inhalation, sublingual, uh, and an edible or gummy or chocolate. I don't recommend chocolate before you go to bed because of the caffeine, but uh, let's talk about uh, those routes. Yeah, so uh, when you talk about smokable, right, mm -hmm. that one typically is more for a treatment and just a shorter term effect because it's going to last you about 30 minutes to two hours. Yep. So if you're someone who wakes up in the middle of the night, that may not be the route to keep you going down for the whole night, but it can get you down, yep. right? Whereas, the idea is to stay down. Exactly. Yep. You want to stay down the whole night so you can get that REM sleep, get mm -hmm. you know rested. So the other route is sublingual. Mm -hmm. Now there, it's interesting, you start to absorb it in the mucous membranes in the mouth mm -hmm. and when you swallow, you, you process it to the liver. Yep. And that'll last you a good uh, four to six hours. Sure. Uh, so that can be a good, good amount of relief. And then the edibles. Yep. Edibles, those can last anywhere from, gosh, 10 to 15 hours. And that can take up to two hours to take effect. So yes. you really got to time it properly. Timing is everything with an edible. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, you described it perfectly because there are different stages. So smokable or inhalation can be step one. Step two could be uh, uh, sublingual. And then step three could be the edible. Smoking will put you down, but the idea is to keep you down. So if somebody is a vapor, I personally couldn't imagine smoking a joint before going to bed. I don't really, really like to smoke anyway, but that's just me. That's my preference. Everybody's different. But taking a puff of a vape is, is a decent strategy, mm -hmm. uh, but it'll put you down. But then a tincture after that uh, right at bedtime as well uh, can can be a faster onset it usually takes about 30 minutes and then uh, you're down for four to six hours which is enough for some people edibles I'll always recommend doing at least an hour before bed uh, that way you're metabolizing it and by the time you go to bed you're a little groggy and ready to go down but having that bait for fast acting is, is a good strategy if you're open to that but uh, what we've seen with patients that struggle with just taking an edible to go to bed is we'll tell them to stack the tincture and the edible. Just be careful. Uh, marijuana hangover or THC hangover the next day is no fun. It is not like alcohol. There's no hair of the dog. You're in bed and staying in bed. Uh, usually a good dose of caffeine could snap you out of it, but caffeine's not for everybody either. That's true. That's true. Or you can have a, a shot of CBD that helps kind of take some of that THC off the receptors. And yep. Clean it off a little yep. bit. Yep. So to, uh, to, to you know, piggyback off of that, THC binds to the receptor, CBD blocks, right? So if uh, you become psychotropic and you don't like how you feel, you can take CBD to reverse that psychotropic effect because it will release the, C the THC. Uh, the problem with a lot of ratio products where people will take CBD and then take THC, sometimes that's not a good strategy at nighttime uh, because not enough THC binds to the receptor and therefore it doesn't uh, give them the sedative properties that they're looking for. So, but everything's an experiment we definitely encourage people to experiment titrate on their own uh and if you're going to push the limits with thc do it on the weekends right because uh you know if you gotta if you can sleep in a little bit uh the more the, the, i guess that's the best strategy that's right. That way you don't have to worry about waking up groggy and feeling feeling good in the morning. That's so, right. Yeah. But sleep, when sleep sucks, life sucks. When sleep is great, life is great. And it's really that simple. So the more people that can hear that, I think the merrier. And uh, go to myfloridagreen.com, click on Get Started, and we'll see you soon. Let's do it. All right.